We have been dry camping on our friend's property in eastern Washington for two months now. Before the pandemic started, we had been planning to go to New England to see the fall colors. The fall is approaching, so now it's time to go. Our plan is to head to upstate New York, where we can quarantine for two weeks at a friend's property. We want to take that journey fairly quickly, with least amount of interactions along the way. So we plan to take around the 2800 mile journey in about eight days. We have staged our RV, we hooked up to the truck, and put it on the level ground so that tomorrow morning we can just put the slide in and go. After spending two and a half months in Idaho and using that time to renovate our RV, we spent another couple of months at our friend's place in Washington. Matt helped them install new solar panels and batteries on their Airstream, and I made massive progress on our video backlog. We also celebrated our two-year NOMA anniversary. Our alarm clock rang at 5 o'clock and 5.20 were on the road. That's because we had prepared everything the night before and in the morning we just had to put the clothes on, put up the stabilizers up and we were ready to go. On very long travel days like today, uh, we'll drive about 600 miles. We like to get started early and then after a little while stop for the breakfast. So we already did that, did a quick stop for the breakfast. Now our first bigger stop, we are getting gas. Uh, we are Costco members, so we're getting gas at Costco because it's on the way. And also we'll do our shop at the Costco uh, while we're here still in Washington, where we have been for the last two months um, socially distancing. To minimize our interactions with others on this trip, we prepared a meal plan for the whole trip. And we only did uh, shopping uh, right before we left to the regular grocery store. And now we're stopping at Costco to get the rest of our groceries. Alright, so it is 7 o'clock in the evening on day one of our journey from Washington State all the way across the country to New York. We have been on the road since 5.20 a.m. this morning and we've now done 550 miles. But we're still not there, we've got about another 35 miles or so to do before we get to our first spot, our first camping spot I guess which is going to be a Walmart. We're going to be staying in a Walmart parking lot tonight. And that's Nothing. the first time we will ever stay at a Walmart or Cabela's or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so we'll see how the experience goes. Yeah, it's nothing fancy obviously, um, but it's somewhere that we can just stop overnight and we're going to be getting in at about 8 o'clock this evening, leaving again at probably what, 7 o'clock, 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so we won't be there for long but it's functional and we phoned ahead, we've spoken to the assistant manager and we are cool to go and stay there. So, uh, so yeah, but that's not the only preparation that we've done for this journey. Yeah, so one of the things we did was uh, prepare food ahead of time and prepare the meal plan for the whole uh, trip so that we had, so that we could minimize our stops at the grocery stores. Um, and also minimizing like the temptation to yes run into the gas station and grab a pack of chips or some chocolate or something and this way we've got healthy options available to us at all times. We definitely used to do that, stop at gas stations and get chips, like chips was kind of my nemesis for road trips but I've gotten better and now we have food and snacks prepared and also we're trying to uh, stop at reasonable intervals so that we don't go hungry. Exactly. So we've also done a few other things to prepare for the trip. Uh, before we set off, obviously, we dumped our black and grey tanks. Uh, we also filled our fresh tank, but not full. We filled it, what, half full or so, I guess? Mm -hmm. 
and normally we travel with a full tank when we're going boondocking or when we're leaving a boondocking spot. Our fresh is nearly empty, but our black and grey tanks are full. This time we're traveling with empty black and gray and about half fresh, just to keep the weight down. And one of the reasons for that is on such a long journey, 27, 2800 miles, that extra weight will impact our fuel economy. And since we don't need to carry the water, we can easily stop at a dump station along the way, top up if we need to. Uh, we figured we might as well head out with uh, with less than full tanks. So while Diana was tidying up, or I say, tidying up the RV and did some cooking, I came out and cleaned the truck inside, uh, paying special attention to all of the windows. I also cleaned the windows outside as well. I just figured if we're going to be in the car for like eight days, we want it to look nice, we want it to be tidy and clean and not have things scattered around, so I sorted the centre console out, I wiped around everywhere in here, and then cleaned all the windows, because the last thing you want as, as the driver is to be looking out through a, a dirty windshield, plus the camera. The cameras, yeah, the cameras don't like looking out dirty windows either. And uh, we'll see how long the windows stay clean for, because after eight days probably the truck and the windows will start looking pretty sorry, but at least we started in a very yeah. clean and nice state. Another thing we did uh, was we um, filled our propane tank, but we filled one full tank and the other one we didn't fill, just so that maybe, we, I mean, we're not gonna be using that much propane throughout the trip because we'll be running the fridge on uh, elect electric. Um, so we thought we would save a little bit of weight um, along the journey. So then we have half an hour left and then we'll see what the Walmart has in store for us. And fingers crossed we can find a spot that's just not too crazy busy and loud and things at Walmart. But we'll, hopefully we can just keep the, the truck and trailer fully hooked up. Mm -hmm. We'll probably have to put some stabilizers down if we can't get it quite level. Um, but otherwise, ideally, I'd have no stabilizers down so in the morning we can just roll straight out. This is not a, a resort we're going to, it's just an overnight stop. And in general we like in the mornings we like to just roll out and then maybe an hour, hour and a half later then stop for breakfast. So for the time being, another half an hour or so and we'll be there. We just did our third gas stop for the day and it happened to be Costco as well. I think this is the first time we've done all the gas stops at Costco's. They just have been so nicely right next to the highway. And the nice thing about Costco is that it's a lot cheaper than the other gas stations. So uh, it works out really well for us. It is day two on our trek to the East Coast. This morning we woke up at Walmart in Bozeman, Montana, and now it is 4.30 and we have done 430 miles and 30 more miles to go to Rapid City, uh, South Dakota. Our Walmart experience was actually pretty okay. I think it met the expectations that we had. Our expectations was that it would, it would be um, fairly loud and that was the case because there was a train line nearby. That didn't bother me too much, but there was some, at around three o'clock, some other buzzing noise, noise started outside and I could not figure out what it was and it kept me awake. It sounded like some kind of two-stroke engine on something, but whatever it was, I guess someone was using some machinery nearby. But to clean something maybe, or I don't yeah, know. Yeah, we couldn't, we couldn't work out where it was coming from, but it was, it was pretty loud. Yeah, um, so, you know, obviously it's not as nice as being boondocking in the middle of nowhere. But having the right expectations going into it, I think made it, you know, fine. Yeah, and I mean, it's completely free. So this is something that Walmart allows RVers to do at, at certain locations. Yeah. We really appreciate that. Uh, the etiquette is, is pretty simple, which is just minimize your impact there. Uh, we didn't put our stabilizers down. We didn't put our slide out. We it, called ahead of time. We called ahead of time. We checked uh, with the assistant manager there for permission. They were fine with it. They just said park out near the back, which we did. 
Uh, the only thing that we did really to, to set up the RV was we had to put the tongue jack down. We just couldn't quite get it level front back. Um, so we needed to, to put the tongue jack down a bit. So we put it on a load of the, the plastic leveling blocks to make sure it didn't leave any, any marks on the asphalt or anything. Um, but otherwise we just got into the trailer, went to bed because we didn't arrive until after oh, yeah. eight o'clock. Yeah. So we went into Walmart, we bought a few things in there. So by the time we got back to the RV, it was, it was almost nine o'clock. Yeah, then we hit the road this morning, what time, about seven o'clock was seven it? Seven o'clock, yeah. So another long day today, uh, not as long as yesterday, and also no time zone change today. Yes, that's uh, so, just helpful. Yeah, yesterday, not only was it a long day, but the clocks worked against us. Um, so that, that made it later. Today we've gone all the way across Montana, through the northeastern corner of Wyoming, uh, and we're now in South Dakota, like we said, just coming up at our destination, Rapid City. And tonight we will do another, I guess it's called lot docking. Uh, we'll stay at uh, Cabela's, or at least that's the plan so far. Uh, we called ahead and they have no problem with us staying there. So hopefully there will be some spots for us. Yeah. So yesterday um, I talked about some of the things that we could share as tips and some of the things that work for us in the uh, on the RV when we're doing these long driving days. One of those is probably one of the most unusual features of the electrical system that we've installed in our RV. We have lithium batteries and we have an inverter, we have solar panels on the roof, but we also have a DC to DC charger. Now this is uh, made by a company called Red Arc, and what it does is it allows us to plug an extra cable between the truck and the trailer whenever we're towing and get 40 amps or about 500 to 600 watts of power from the truck to the trailer whenever we're, we're powered up. On long travel days like this, that makes a real difference oh, yeah. because combined with the solar on the roof, we're pulling in six, seven, eight, even 900 watts of power uh, during the midday sun. This is more than enough to charge our batteries from the night before. It will also give us enough power to switch the fridge to run on electric AC mode using the inverter. So this means that we can turn our propane off completely, like you should do for travel anyway, but rather than just leaving the fridge closed and turned off, it's running all day. It's just running on electric rather than propane. This is actually really useful like yesterday when we stopped in a Costco and we loaded yeah. the fridge up with more stuff. Just leaving it turned off, that stuff wouldn't have got cold. This way we're able to, to chill the food that we put in. Another big advantage and it really only works on these kind of longer travel journeys where we're not trying to save water and tank capacity, is that it allows us to arrive at our destination with a full tank of hot water heated only using the electric water heater. So not only does that mean we don't need to run the propane during the day to heat the water, which we wouldn't want to do while we're driving, it also saves the propane. Uh, so it just costs less money because we've got free power. So we're able to use that to heat the water as we drive during the day, meaning a nice hot shower when we arrive after a long day of driving. Did you say that was weird to shower at the Walmart parking lot? Yeah, taking a hot shower in a Walmart parking lot was just odd, I'll be honest with you. It, it, just to clarify, indoor shower, I was not outdoor showering <laughs> in Walmart. But nonetheless, knowing that you're standing there in your RV in a Walmart parking lot, yeah, that, that felt pretty weird. But it is nice though to have that extra power that we can run these things. We don't have to worry too much about how much power we're using. We stopped for lunch today and we heated up a portion yeah. of the chili that we'd made. And heated it up in the microwave. Heated that up in the microwave. Yeah. Uh, tonight when we arrive, we'll use the Instant Pot again. We're probably gonna do some boiled eggs in the Instant Pot. We don't have to worry about the amount of power because even if it were raining all day long tomorrow or cloudy, yeah. Yeah. we would still have enough power from that DC to DC charger to fill our batteries and heat the water and everything else. So top tip, be aware of how much your tow vehicle really is able to charge your, your trailer. And honestly, unless you've done something special, the answer is not a lot. But using something like the Red Arc DC to DC charger that we have on our rig really adds a big difference and allows you to fully charge your batteries and then some. So see you in a bit at hopefully Cabela's parking lot. We have arrived. Now I just need to turn on the Level Mate Pro. 
There we go. Did you get the fly? <laughs> There's no fly, so no, I didn't. <laughs> Uh, I have to stay entertained somehow. <laughs>